Hey everybody, it's Drift, back with another devlog. Since the last devlog, we've done a couple more shows. The spring show season is pretty nuts. We did Synthfest France, thanks to everybody who came out. Uh, folks from the Discord showed up, folks who'd seen it on YouTube showed up. It was great talking to everybody, and obviously that part of the country is really, really pretty. We also did the Chicago Electronic Music Conference, which was another really cool show. It's great to have that in our hometown here. So between all that running around, there was a lot of work getting done, you know, on planes and, and hotel lobbies, and a lot of progress has been made, and I'm super excited to share where we're at. First up is manufacturing. That's progressing nicely. We get these great little tool reports from Steve, our vendor, that gives us information about progress on the individual machining operations for all of the tooling. Next up is software. Let's take a look at the progress on the library system. It all starts at this library menu. We're able to edit some things, in this case, the name. We have this text editor UI. This is super important. This is how you're going to be able to edit ID3 tags, um, name saved files, make playlists, all that kind of stuff. Because this library is empty, all I can do is add music. What this does is it brings up a file browser. I'm actually looking at the file system on zero. So you navigate it just like you would a normal hard drive. In this case, I'm going to navigate into the music folder. I can either select an individual file for import, or I can scan an entire directory. What this is going to do is scan this directory and every subdirectory below it, and build a little database of everything you want to import. At the end of that process, you get a total song count. It will also do some analysis to figure out what's new, what's just an update of an existing song. It will also note any errors that it spots. Next up, we have this design document. This is where the majority of the work in the last month has gone. It covers the database schema. It also covers the UX workflows through the library. So first, let's talk a little bit about the database. Zero exists in a world full of mature library management software. Zero is not necessarily trying to become the replacement for those. It's really meant as an and more than an or. So that thinking has driven our database schema design, which is what you see represented here. Zero's database system is designed for joining together data from multiple systems. Zero can take in ID3 tag data, it can take in data from a record box library, it can take in data from an engine DJ library, Serato, all those things, and store that data and make non destructive edits, and also enable you to create your own curation data on the device. For example, you will be able to edit cue points imported from a record box library. You will also be able to add your own. You'll be able to edit ID3 tag data. You will also be able to add your own tag data. That's where this database schema comes in. This represents a lot of behind the scenes stuff. This is all necessary to, to enable Zero to live within this sort of rich uh, library software management universe. With all of that in place, uh, we're able to then go in and design specific UI workflows. So it all sort of starts when you launch the library menu. It's currently designed to support multiple libraries. This is driven partly by the notion that a single user may be using multiple library management tools. It's also driven by the notion that you might want to have different libraries for different sets of music. That was the thinking. Um, so if you have feedback on that, definitely jump into the comments, come into the Discord, and tell us all about it. Another important piece of this, and this is sort of important across the entire UI, is going to be this text input system that you saw animated a little bit earlier. The ability to edit text is a critical workflow for this system. You need to be able to change file names. You need to be able to uh, edit tags. You need to be able to create playlists and name things. The, getting this right uh, has been a really important piece of the software. Once you've got your library loaded, uh, you're able to add music to it, and you get this file browser view that does all of that. It lets you navigate the hard drive. It lets you select files. It lets you, you know, do all of the things you would do with a normal sort of file browser. This starts to get interesting, right? Again, because Zero lives in this world of different different library management tools, uh, we need to be able to import an entire directory of audio files, subdirectories, and all that stuff. We also need to support the selection of a single file. For example, if you're working on a track and you want to be able to load it onto Zero, simple drag and drop of the file itself onto Zero's hard drive, uh, then you can go in and select the single file itself to import. And then we get into the sort of external library stuff. Uh, so for Recordbox uh, and Engine DJ, they will export, you know, XML. Engine DJ will do JSON or CSV, etc. Um, we need to be able to import everything from that file. Uh, there are also more complicated workflows, which we're working on down the road, where you want to be able to link Zero to sort of a live Engine DJ database. Um, that's a, that's more possible than, for example, Recordbox. Recordbox's database is encrypted. Engine DJ's is not, which means that we can potentially get in there and 
For example, if you flash your engine DJ library to a USB key, we're working on a workflow where you can plug that USB key into zero and just link into that database and you can do live edits against that database. If you then unplugged the key and plugged it into a playback system, all of the edits that you've made on zero would appear in that playback system. Things like playlists, cue points, all that stuff. So anyway, the import path logic is an important moving part of this whole system. Being able to figure out based on what the user does, what they're trying to import and react appropriately. So once the user has selected the input source, we've got to run through some UI to get the user status. Then we go into the full import workflow. If you've selected one file, we're going to give you a little bit of data on the file before you import it. If you've selected a directory of files, then we're going to give you the files that you've selected. Because Zero supports USB host mode, you can import the files from that thumb drive onto Zero. And you have two ways of doing that. You can either just build a library that stays on the thumb drive, or you can copy all of those files to Zero's internal library. That's what this little toggle is. And obviously, if you try to select more files than will fit on Zero's 32 gigabyte hard drive, then we need some sort of way to, to give you info about that. Once you've got your import all set up, that's when we go into this full import workflow. So what you're going to get is a menu that gives you progress for each file that's currently being imported, as well as you'll be able to scroll down and basically see the whole list. So that's the file import. The next stages of the library are really post-import. Once you've, once you've imported everything, then you get into the metadata edits. You will be able to see a rough waveform. You'll also be able to see all of the cue points that are currently set. These little dotted lines represent the loops that are set. It's important to note that while you're looking at this stuff in the library, you can also play the song back. So you'll be able to check your cue points and all that kind of stuff. So continuing down the view, you've got the BPM setting. This is editable. You can change the BPM after a file has been imported. We'll also show you any of the ID3 data that came in, any of the data that came in from Rekordbox, all of that kind of stuff, so that you can go and edit it if you need to. You can also do playlist management. You can tag files. You can do all of this stuff. The final uh, bit of the puzzle, the part that I'm actually most excited about, is the cue point edit. So for example, in this view, we've, we've clicked on this first cue point. And what you get is a slightly more zoomed in waveform. There's a way to turn the tone knobs that adjusts the zoom for this uh, waveform. And then you get a sample accurate waveform that shows you exactly where the cue point is set. So you can use this to get really accurate with your cue points. And obviously, while you're in this view, you can be pressing the hot cue button to audition where your cue point is set. With this view, you can also select the loop. You can basically turn a cue point into a loop. So when, you, when you go into the playback view, uh, it'll just come up already with a loop enabled. So that's where we're at with the library. The next devlog you see will be all this UI work that we've laid out here in action. If you have any questions, uh, put them into the comment section, uh, jump into the Discord, reach out on the website. We'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.